Dr. Isaacson breaks down IND's ongoing biorepository study for neurodegenerative diseases. This vital research aimed at understanding disease progression and the benefits of a variety of therapeutic interventions is largely funded by philanthropy and urgently needs more support to continue its impact. Stay tuned as we explore the future of preventative neurology and how you can contribute to our efforts. It's called the, the BioRAN study, the biorepository study for neurodegenerative diseases. And basically people with a family history of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or Lewy body dementia, or those affected with the earliest symptomatic phases. So not people with dementia, but people with mild cognitive impairment. We have a subset of patients like that. We also do have some controls with no family history across a variety of ages. And basically as a biorepository, it's ongoing. So there's no exact end date uh, mm -hmm. set. And basically how ind.org uh, works is the more uh, funding we get, the more research funding we get, the more people we can recruit. Instead of just doing our study in Boca Raton, we now have a collaborative research site, a clinical research site in both New York and Palm Beach. While we're uh, technically funded for 75, we actually have about 110 people in the study. I wish we could take more. We need more people. And by the way, we have 100 people in the study, but they come back longitudinally. I, I, ideally, we'd like people to come back every year, but at a bare minimum every two years. And most of the controls are coming back every two years. But people that have risk factors that are working with their physicians, and there are lots of physicians that have referred patients to the trial. I take care of a, a handful of the patients, a small number of the patients. We have a preventive cardiologist in Miami that, that takes care of several patients. We have doctors from all over the country, New York, all over South Florida. And then they refer their patients in. They treat their risk factors for Alzheimer's, vascular risk factors, et cetera. What we're doing is we have over 200 um, blood draws on these 100 people. Be locking the data set at some point in like mid 2024, sometime in the summer of 2024. The good news is, is we're funded for hundred patients basically, but we don't have full funding for all the statistical work, the manuscript writing, this stuff takes a lot of time. Statistics are super expensive. The big data aspect is really confusing and costly. And, and again, per hour is, is very costly. So um, long story short, if our resources are sufficient, we're going to bang out a lot of good data sooner. Um, this type of research is not generally um, funded by kind of some of the traditional funders out there. And uh, we, um, you know, are basically funded by philanthropy. Uh, we have some grants that we've gotten, some foundations and things like that. But in terms of the, the lion's share of our research are from grateful um, patients, people that have heard about us online, um, a couple of very wealthy people that have really been amazing supporters over the last decade or so. And they're trying, trying to give back and we're trying to like understand what works, what doesn't what the biomarkers mean and again try to democratize access 100 people getting this type of care like that's not enough that's not fair um we need to do better and, and that's really the goal of this and i hope in 2025 we'll be well funded and we'll be able to enroll lots of people all over the united states but science is expensive so the scientific research when done in a really rigorous way these blood tests are expensive we had to build our own lab and that was i've never spent that much money in my life so quickly blood testing these cassettes that we we run 86 samples on 10 grand a pop and you have to run multiples and then you have okay. to try other biomarkers and the costs are just exorbitant. Eventually the, the government should hopefully help with this stuff. I hope that one day people can go see their doctor and their doctor can write on the, the code to get paid risk reduction for Alzheimer's or dementia right. prevention or whatever. Right now, doctors can't even get paid for this type of care. There's no code. So we live in a sick care system, not a healthcare system. Doctors can get money from insurance companies and Medicare. When they treat a problem, when someone has memory loss, or someone has diabetes, or someone has, I don't know, something bad. Not when someone wants to reduce their risk or try to protect themselves from getting a disease. There's no diagnostic code for that. Our medical system is broken, unfortunately. So I hope that in terms of what can people do, they can get empowered, realize that there are things that they can do to reduce their risk, go online, get educated. Maybe some people can get involved in adv advocacy effort. Some people can donate if they have the funds. but yeah, I think, I think the best thing a person can do is just take a deep breath and say, you know, I am in some degree of control of my brain health Four out of every 10 cases of dementia may be preventable. If that person does everything right, we're not powerless. That being said, the promise not to overpromise. some people can do everything right and still get dementia. And that's either due to a genetic reason or multiple factors. But yeah, I think we're just in a totally different ball game, totally different um, sport than we were in five, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, in five, 10 or 15 years from now, um, I think Alzheimer's is gonna be something that if we identify early, intervene on early, the magnitude of the problem will decrease quite a bit. We hope you enjoyed this video. 
To access a free Mastering Brain Health course led by Dr. Richard Isaacson, visit ind.org slash learn. And to directly contribute to IND's research efforts, visit ind.org slash donate.